Welcome back to the Volleyball University podcast. Uh, you can kind of see we have a different setup now. So we have moved on to a video podcast. I'm trying to up my production game. So I got like a nice camera in front of me right now. So hopefully this kind of makes episodes a little bit better for you guys. This also allows us to drop VBU episodes on YouTube. So the podcast can be even more spread out. Anyway, with that being said, today's podcast is what to do when you get cuts from the volleyball team. At this point, when this podcast has dropped, there have been many tryouts that have already happened nationwide and probably internationally. And some of you who are listening might have not made the team. I've been there myself before too, because uh, if you don't know my story yet, when I was a sophomore in high school, I tried out for the JV team and I was cut from that team. Over time, I was able to work my way up to making varsity and by the end of my senior year, I was the team captain, the MVP, and I also got all conference. That being said, I wanna rewind and take you back to what happened sophomore year when I got cut and what I chose to do and what you could choose to do. So there are basically, I think, three options you have or three things that you can do when you do get cut. The first option is to basically stop playing volleyball. If you get cut from the team, that means you weren't good enough to make it this time around. So you could just stop playing and decide to do something else, focus on a different hobby, maybe a different sport. And then over time, that sting of not being able to play volleyball or not making the team, you're gonna get over it and life will go on. Many people kind of naturally do this option. So they get cut from the team, they're sad about it or angry or whatever they wanna feel, which is good. But then afterwards, they kind of just get over it and volleyball just doesn't become as important to them and they just move on with their lives. Option number two is that you can continue to play volleyball, but just understand that it won't be as competitive as you want it to be. So I have friends or I have people that I know who, you know, maybe didn't play varsity volleyball, but they still continue to play to this day, whether it be in like recreational leagues, different types of adult tournaments or anything like that, even playing with friends. So just because you got cut from the team doesn't mean you have to stop playing volleyball. If you love the sport, if you love playing, you can continue to play volleyball. It just won't be on this specific team. And that's totally okay. Honestly, I think too many people get tripped up on like having to be on this team or that team. Like if you enjoy the sport of volleyball, you can continue to play. For example, I played basketball in high school too. And I stopped playing after my sophomore year. It just wasn't as important to me, but I still love basketball. I still watch it and I still play it to this day. I mean, last winter I was in the basketball league with my friends. So like basketball is something I play every year. It's just not something that I, I do as consistently as volleyball, but I still keep it in my life. And that's what I'm saying. For option two, you can continue to keep volleyball in your life even though you got cut and you can still play the game. And the last option, option number three, which is the option I chose, is you can double down and fully commit to yourself and fully commit to the sport and to getting better so that you can play on the team next year or next time. Now, obviously this kind of depends on like how much time you have. Like if you get cut as a senior, you know, you don't really have another year in high school to for the team, right? If you are like a freshman or in middle school or anything like that, and you get cut from a team, you can double down and you can work harder to make the team next time. There are many stories of different players who got cut at some point in time and made the team later on, right? I mean, my story is one of those stories. Now, I do want to mention if you do choose option three, you have to understand that's gonna take a lot of work. Like if you didn't make the team, you didn't make it because you weren't good enough. That's for like political reasons or you know other reasons that you can't control, which you know that's out of the scope of this podcast. But if it really came down to skill, then you can work up your skills or your athleticism, or whatever it might be, so that you can make the team next time. So for me, I became the team manager slash practice player and I went to all the practices that the players went to and I made sure that I worked harder than all the players on the team. After that, my junior year, I made sure to play club volleyball. I made sure to go to the weight room to work on my athleticism. I even did stuff outside the weight room to work on my vertical jump extra. In fact, I ended up doing too much because that actually later led to like knee pain issues because I was overworking myself. but. Uh, that's another podcast, so we'll talk about that next time. But really the biggest thing that I did was intention. I set the goal to make varsity eventually, and then I had to really put in the work and fully utilize my opportunities to put in full work. So like when I went to club practice, it was me and another setter, and you can tell that he just didn't try as hard as I did or didn't take advantage of the opportunity as much as I did. And that was my advantage. If you are hungrier than other people, and you put in the work, 
you can get to a higher level of volleyball and you can kind of overcome being cut to eventually make the team. So even like outside of club volleyball, I went home and I did different types of volleyball drills at home and tried to figure out things. I would watch really good studies from other teams and try to copy what they do. I was basically constantly trying to be a student of the game and I pretty much became obsessive, right? But because of all those things, I was able to eventually make the varsity team and become captain and all of that. Now I do want to add this important part here. If you do choose option three after getting cut, there's still a chance you might get cut again. There's only so many spots available for volleyball teams in the world or in, in the US or wherever you live. So like, even though you deserve to make the team because you work harder and this and that, sometimes when it comes down to life, you just don't make the team, right? But for me, it's something that I at least had to try. I couldn't just not try. I had to try and luckily for me, it worked out. So just as like a quick recap, you have three options when you get cut, I think. First option, just stop playing volleyball, find other things to do, life will go on, there's plenty to enjoy out there and you'll be okay. Option two, you can continue to play volleyball, you just won't play on a super competitive team, but you can still make plenty of friends, you can still make plenty of memories, and you can keep playing volleyball for the rest of your life. And option number three, you double down and you decide to work as hard as you can with full intention, with full taking uh, opportunities to their advantage, and you go all in. And with option three, you can be a success story. You can be someone that has got cut and has made the team because I've done it myself and I've seen others do it too. Now this is the Volleyball University podcast. So I do have to mention Volleyball University. If you are someone that does choose option three and you want to get advice and help from somebody who has gone through that journey, I can be the coach that helps you out. I mentioned earlier that I did a bunch of drills in my garage and, and practice from home. So I know what drills work and I know what drills don't work. On top of that, I've been coaching volleyball for 10 plus years. So I know a lot more now than I knew as a sophomore and junior in high school. So in terms of what I can help you with and, and the things that I can teach you, it's just on a different level. If you're new to this podcast or you're new to Volleyball University and you don't know what we do, Basically, we have an app or a service that allows you to get better from home. In the app, we have a bunch of resources where you can pick different drills that focus on specific skills like serving or hitting or setting. And there's even other resources in the app as well, like our nutrition section, our mental performance section. We just added a partner drill section you can do with partner drills. And we even added a whiteboard session where you can kind of learn on a whiteboard different types of strategies and things you can do within the game of volleyball. So if you are interested in learning more about Volleyball University or becoming a member, you can send me a message with the word podcast and I will direct you to how to sign on the app and how to become a member. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, this is our first YouTube podcast, please make sure to subscribe. We want to grow our YouTube so that we can reach more people, so that we can help more people. Because there's a lot of players out there that want to get better and they don't know how to, and that's what we're here to do.